What's up, nerds? My name's Noah, and today I'm going to be your guide to uncovering these five tips on how to get ChatGPT to be your dungeon master. So grab your laptops, gather your dice, and let's head into the wonderful world of AI. Let's not dilly-dally, let's get right into step one, which is to give ChatGPT a little bit of confidence. And I know that sounds dumb, but trust me, if you just say, hey, run a 5e game for me, you'll probably get something that looks a little bit like this. But to avoid this, all we really need to do is tell it that it can do it. By simply telling ChatGPT that it's an amazing dungeon master already with all the skills and knowledge needed to run a 5e campaign, it can. Think of GPT as the Pokemon Ditto. It does its best work when it has an identity and is gifted an identity by you, its trainer. And once you give that Ditto its context, its identity, would you ask it to do its battle maneuvers kindly? No, you would command it. You would tell it exactly what to do. And ChatGPT, when given a, a light question like, can you do this thing? Or would you run this campaign for me? Is more likely to deny your request than if you just command it to. Step two is setting the stage. To get ChatGPT rolling, we need to create a vivid world for GPT to set us up in. Now, that could be as simple as just saying Faerun or Tal'Dorei or one of the other worlds that are pre-built, or you could create something for yourself. For example, here's one that I did. We'll be playing in a steampunk RPG setting with a sprawling city of airships, clockwork creatures, and powerful investors. This is just the setting. You also need to include your adventurers. Make sure that all of your characters, if you're playing one, two, or an entire party, are clearly defined inside of the world. You can either ask GPT to make these characters for you, or you can make them yourselves and then implant them into the world. But keep in mind, GPT can only use as much information about your characters as it has. Moving on to step three, it's communication. Once your game is started, it's important to remember that ChatGPT OpenAI is a language model. It'll tell you that repeatedly because of how good it is at that. Speak to GPT in character as much as you can and it will handle it. It will drive the story and move it in one direction or another based on the responses that you give inside of the world. That being said, it's important to make sure that you have a way to speak to GPT outside of the game, in the meta. That way you can correct how the game is running if something's not going correctly, or to give it new directives on how you'd like the story to move, or anything that it might have missed that you've picked up on. I like to use brackets that look like this, in order to speak in the meta. Now, ChatGPT can build a variety of story arcs and challenges and situations for players to partake in. That being said, most of them are going to be role played or it will attempt to role play through things like combat or skill challenges. So for this, it's important to make sure that when you're walking into an encounter that you would like to be combat or you would like to be a skill challenge, that you are clearly defining that and letting GPT not just know that you would like this to be combat, but how you want that combat run. I will say at this point, the AI isn't great at running the more traditional encounters, but if you push it, it can do it. And finally, we've reached step number five, and that is to, well, embrace the unexpected. GPT isn't perfect, and it might occasionally take the story in a direction that you don't like. Some people are going to like that more than others, and it's okay. I mean, it's your game. Do what you want. You know, it's my experience that some of the most memorable moments are the ones that I didn't expect and that went differently than I would have written them. So for me, that stuff is awesome. But... If you don't really like to adapt or go with the flow all of the time, or if ChatGPT just ignores some of your preferences and prompts from before, you can always hit the regenerate response button. I won't tell anyone. And there you have it, adventurers. With these five steps, you are ready to embark on a fantastic journey with ChatGPT as your wonderful dungeon master. If you found this video helpful, then please make a main channel out of that like button, hit subscribe, and of course, if you want to buy me a coffee, then I have a buy me a coffee link as well as a Patreon. I'm going to be posting all of my ChatGPT 
PDFs on Patreon and there for anyone who gives any amount. So yeah, and thank you guys for hopping by. I really appreciate this. Uh, the channel keeps growing and I am surprised every week. So thank you so much. Um, happy gaming and I'll see you next time. Peace.